Hi there. If, like me, you like to travel and use trains as part of a low carbon travel diet, you may well need to cross Paris to get from one station to another. And while there's plenty of advice on how to do this quickly and easily, let's do something very Parisian instead. Let's go for a stroll. I've allowed plenty of time to get from Gare du Nord to Gare de Lyon, so we can take in some of the sights, sounds and smells of the world's 28th best city, according to Time Out. First stop is the Canal Saint-Martin. And, spoiler alert, it's also pretty much our last stop as well, as we're going to be following the path of the canal to get to our destination. So, a good thing about this walk is, it's hard to get lost. Anyway, where was I? Ah. The Canal Saint-Martin was dug out in the 1820s to provide clean, safe drinking water to Parisians who were getting sick of the Seine and its cholera-loving poopy water and it's proved a popular place to potter ever since. Incidentally, if at any point along this route you start getting a feeling of deja vu, it may well be because it's provided the perfect backdrop to a whole heap of films. And you may also be pleased to know that by going for a nice long stroll through Paris, we will be joining a very select club, the Flaneurs. This group of genteel urban explorers like nothing better than to wander, loaf and lounge their way around Paris, taking in the sights and sounds of the metropolis. And to help rookie flaneurs acclimatise themselves to life in the slow lane, they're advised to bring along a pet tortoise. As we go further, the canal seems to disappear. That's because, soon after the canal was cut, much of it was given a garden roof to let Parisians have a bit more space to loaf around without getting their feet wet. And the underground passage for boats also had another benefit. In this rebellious city, troops could be moved around to quell any potential riots without the revolting peasants getting wind of where they were. Now, probably its most valuable function is as, you guessed it, a film set with around two shoots per week. Back above ground, there are a series of parks. Apparently, this one makes people dance. And what French park would be complete without some locals playing petanque? Maybe it's time to find a bench and watch the action. In the 1930s, full-time flaneur Walter Benjamin devoted time to meticulously observing the locals and created his masterpiece, The Arcades Project. Described as one of the most important books never to have been written, its unfinished form still weighs in at a hefty 1,000 pages. Hmm, maybe you could have dragged that around instead of a tortoise. Luckily, his life's work and his life has been summed up in a comic book. Comic books, or bandes dessinées, are a big thing in France. And we pass a BD shop en route, so feel free to stroll in and pick up something for the journey. And if you can't follow the French text, then you could always just look at the pictures and make it up. Speaking of which, let's crack on. Further along, we pass a more sobering sight. The music venue Bataclan became a focus for grief after a terrorist attack in 2015. But a year later, it was back up and running and became a place that showed the resilience of Parisians and their determination to never stop doing what they love. And then we reach the Bastille which may be famous for being stormed to release its only, presumably lonely prisoner. But these days, it's a nice place for people to meet up and maybe watch the skateboarders. And so we're on our final stretch, where the canal re-emerges, ready to join the River Seine. Time for a last stroll past the boats, before popping over to the Gare de Lyon. And there we are. We've crossed Paris, and now we can catch a train to Southern Europe. I hope you like this little tour. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. Cheerio.